Hello and welcome to a new episode of Adobe Creative Cloud TV. My name is Terry White and in this episode, it's my pleasure to give you a first look at the brand new Lightroom Mobile 2.0 for iOS, basically for your iPhone and your iPad. Now, for those of you who are new or haven't used Lightroom Mobile yet, you have Lightroom on your desktop. It's Lightroom CC 2015 as of the recording of this video. And of course, you have mobile devices. I, I guarantee most of you have a smartphone of some kind. Well, now you can download from your app store the Lightroom for iPhone and Lightroom for iPad, as well as Android versions. Now, we're talking today about the latest 2.0 version for iOS, but of course, we will continue to build out, build out our Android apps and continue to add features there as well. So, what's new in this new version is actually pretty awesome for people that are using Lightroom and more awesome for people that are using mobile devices. Because now, in addition to just being able to sync our collections from the desktop to our mobile devices, make non-destructive edits, they go back and forth, we can go much further with the creativity and the amount of editing that we can do on a mobile device. So, I've got my iPhone here. Now, uh, everything I'm gonna show you is exactly the same for the most part, like 99.9% .9 the same. I can think of one thing that's not, but everything else is the same on iPhone or iPad. Um, and, and one thing I'm thinking about has to do with something that's not on the iPad, so that's why it's different. But otherwise, feature parity across both devices. So whatever I show you here, for the most part, will be exactly on your iPad and vice versa. So I'm not gonna bring up the iPad till maybe the end, I'll show you an edit on that. So, let's go ahead and launch Lightroom Mobile 2.0 on iPhone for the first time. Now the first thing you'll notice is that when I launch Lightroom, that everything is more streamlined. One of the things that people said loud and clear was the icons were too big for you know uh, representing each collection and uh, just took up too much space. So we made the icons smaller, made the names more prominent, take up less space. That means the more collections you have, the less scrolling up and down you'll have to do to find the collection you're looking for. So that's been organized a lot better. Now the other thing you'll notice is down at the bottom, there is a camera roll option. And that camera roll is just letting me know how many photos are on my device's camera roll. I can, of course, go get any of those anytime I want and bring those in just like I could before. But now there's a few new options. First, if I go to my Lightroom settings, you'll notice that uh, there's a new auto add photos that's on by default and auto add videos that's now off by default. And that's a great combination because, and if it's not off, you might want to turn the auto add videos off because videos that you shoot with your device are great but you might not want them all in Lightroom so this way I can hand pick which ones I want to import instead of it importing every single video I shoot which takes time to sync alright so that's new but the biggest new thing is the new Lightroom capture feature so what I can do is I have a photo here in my office on the wall it's a photo from Monument Valley that I took a few years ago and that's the coolest thing in my immediate proximity that to work with so I'm gonna go ahead and take a photo of that now instead of having to go out to the iPhone camera and then take the picture and come back and import it in I've got a camera icon right there at the bottom so I can go ahead and fire up the camera and the camera of course is live it's showing me exactly what the camera sees on my iPhone but more importantly you'll notice that there are some controls down at the bottom so the first one that's pretty obvious that will give me the ability to turn on the flash, turn it off, or turn it on auto mode. I usually keep it off. I'll turn the flash on if I think I need it, but I usually like to work without the built-in flash. All right, the next one, uh, which is pretty cool. Normally it's on AWB, which stands for auto white balance. Uh, I had it on cloudy a minute ago, but you have all your various light, or all your various white balance settings like fluorescent and tungsten and cloudy and so forth and so on uh, just like you would on your DSLR just like you would on your professional camera more importantly at the very end there's that little wrench that means I've got manual white balance here in Lightroom mobile so I'm gonna go ahead and tap the manual white balance and I've even got a gray card here uh, we will go ahead and hold the gray card up because that's normally what you're aiming for is something that's neutral gray so I'll just bring that up bring that closer to it and tilt it down a little bit and we'll go ahead and snap that and that will now set our white balance to that neutral gray so uh, I've got my custom white balance 
The next icon is your exposure compensation. So I can go ahead and make the photo a little lighter, make it a little darker as I'm taking the photos. I don't have to worry about uh, adjusting that after the fact. And of course, for great composition, you might want the rule of thirds. So we can go ahead and turn on the rule of thirds or other grid options to be able to work with to compose our shots better. And of course that grid will not be on the final photo. That's just for the interface for the camera. And there's even a level control. So you can kind of see uh, based on your device's uh, accelerometer, you can see what if the photo's level or not. That's great for taking landscapes or people or anything else that needs to be level. And uh, again, options you can turn on and off whenever you need. Last but not least, if you're gonna set your device on a uh, tripod, you've got a timer built in now. So you can do, go ahead and take the shot. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a little closer here. And we'll just snap the photo. And of course that photo's there. I can go ahead and see it, take a look at it, preview it. And if I'm happy with it, I can uh, continue or delete it. If I'm, uh, so I'm, it's cut off a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and delete it. And then I'll go back and take another one. There, it's a little bit better. All right, so now that one's there. I kind of like that one better. So now I can just hit the grid in the upper left-hand corner to get right back. And uh, yes, I'm gonna allow Lightroom to delete that photo that I told it to delete. And now we're back to Lightroom. So now that photo, instead of it being in a collection, it's just in my Lightroom photos. So it will sync to the desktop. It'll sync to all my other ones. I can go to it if I want. I can even go in and work on it if I want and add it to a collection. So if I wanted to add it to a collection, I can copy it to or move it to a collection. If it were in a different collection, I could move it. But at this point, I can just copy it. Uh, now, I can go ahead and do any other kind of adjustments I want. So for example, if I wanted to crop it, uh, I could crop it further. Uh, that's a locked aspect ratio. I can go ahead and do a free aspect ratio. And of course, all of this is non-destructive, just like it is on Lightroom on the desktop. Once I get the crop I want, I can go ahead and crop it down. And now let's talk about some of those new adjustment capabilities. When I go to adjust, I have the ability, of course, to work on the most popular adjustments that you would want to make. So I could, for example, increase the vibrance of that photo a little bit, maybe a little bit more saturated. The clarity could certainly go up a little bit and I can keep making adjustments. Now, uh, what we added in the last version, of course, we can uh, just hold our finger down on that bar and go up or down. Now, when you go to color, you'll notice that there is a target at the top. That target uh, is like the targeted adjustment tools in Lightroom on the desktop. So if I tap the target, uh, right now I'm on hue. So it's letting me know if I adjust the hue, I can go up or down or left or right. I don't want to adjust the hue. I want to adjust actually the saturation. So we'll tap the target again. The little finger icon is letting me know. In this case, I can go up or down, left or right. So if I drag on a particular area, I'm now increasing the color of the mountains without affecting the sky. So again, that's the target. So if I tap the target again, I go to the sky, I can go up and down on the sky or left and right on the sky to adjust the color that I tapped on. Let's go ahead and get a little bit bluer. Let's tap right there. There we go, I got the target, there we go. Now we can make our adjustment and make the sky a little bluer. And of course, anytime we tap the target, now anything you drag on will be adjusted. So that's the way the targeted adjustment works. And of course that was found in color. Now, one of the other cool things about Lightroom, um, Lightroom Mobile is, and it's been added, and that is dehaze. So this photo doesn't really need any real dehazing. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're done with it. And uh, I'm gonna go back out to my collections and I have a collection called dehaze, but you know what? I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of things. Number one, I'm gonna go back to that photo we just adjusted, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy it to the dehaze collection, even though it doesn't need dehaze. Because what I wanna do is just show the power of the sync and go over to my iPad where this new photo will be that we took with a brand new iPhone 6S 12 megapixel camera and put it on the iPad, which does not have that camera. All right, so let's go ahead and do a copy. We'll copy it to the dehaze collection. We can copy it to multiple collections, but go ahead and copy it there. So now that photo is not only synced with its adjustments, 
using Creative Sync up to Creative Cloud, back down to my desktop when I get back to my computer. But more importantly, it's also on my other mobile devices, including my iPad. So let me switch gears. Let me pause the video for a second so I can plug in the iPad. And that way we can see the iPad in action. All right, so bear with me for a second. All right, we're back. So all I did was swap the cables, um, plugged in the iPad, unplugged the iPhone so that we can see this last little feature on the iPad with a bigger screen. So as you can see, I've got Lightroom there. I'm just gonna go ahead and launch it. And again, taking advantage of that screen real estate with the iPad being uh, in landscape mode here, I've got two columns of collections instead of having to scroll down to 20 or 30 collections in one big view. Um, and you can see in the upper left-hand corner, proving my point, that the photos, uh, Lightroom Photos, includes that new photo that we just added. So I told it to put it in a dehaze collection. Let's go ahead and check it out. There it is. But that's really, you know, we already adjusted that photo. Let's take a look at what dehaze is all about. I've got a photo here from November 2010. I took it five years ago. And it was just bad conditions, just horrible lighting conditions. Uh, so bad that I never actually even used this photo. Um, but now we've got new tools. So let's go ahead and do the adjust. Swipe up till we get to dehaze. And I get a dehaze slider just like on the desktop. To the left will add haze. To the right will dehaze. So I can actually bring that photo back from 2010 and remove that haze from that day. So awesome. But I notice one more thing. I notice on her collar there, a little piece of her material sticking up. And I'd love to go ahead and just push that down a little bit, just smooth it out right there on the collar. Now, of course, if I were in Lightroom on the desktop, that's not a Lightroom thing. I would just go to uh, choose Edit In, Edit in Photoshop, Liquify, push it down, switch it, save it, back to Lightroom. Well, I'm on my mobile device, and we introduced updates to our Photoshop mobile app today Photoshop Mix 2.0 and Photoshop Mix is great for compositing but it's really not great for making these pixel level adjustments like this so we have a brand new app that's ideal for retouching it's called Photoshop Fix I've got a video on both Photoshop Mix 2.0 and Photoshop Fix 2.1.0 uh, on my uh, YouTube channel where you're probably watching this video at terrywhite.tv but in the meantime, let's take a look at this round tripping capability that we now have between our mobile apps. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a share in the upper right hand corner. And notice there's an edit in command, just like Lightroom on the desktop. So I'll do edit in. It'll ask me, what do I wanna do? I wanna liquefy this in Photoshop Fix. It will take it over to Photoshop Fix, launch it, take me right into liquefy, just like Photoshop would and actually it's doing something faster than Photoshop because it's taking me right to where I want to be. And I can go ahead and zoom up to that area. I've got a brush here. I can make the brush bigger or smaller based on the size of what I want to liquefy. And I can just go ahead and push that down. This is the kind of thing I've always dreamed about. Not only having an app on my iPad that can make these quick adjustments, not, and more importantly, from Lightroom back to Lightroom. And what do I mean by back to Lightroom? We'll see that blue bar at the top. Notice it says touch to save and return to Adobe Lightroom. So as soon as I do that, it not only takes me back to Lightroom, but it adds that photo as a new photo. So I've got the one before and I've got the one after. So this is the one that we started with where we just did the non-destructive dehaze. And here's one where I've got the liquify feature added back in. So now I can keep working with this photo in Lightroom and all my other applications that can see my Lightroom collections. So if I want to tell a story about this trip with Adobe Slate, this photo is now there and ready to go to Adobe Slate or any other application. I can share it from anywhere, to anywhere. So with that, take care and we'll catch you on the next one.